Thank you, Jesus. Father, we give you praise and glory and honor. You are welcome, Holy Spirit. Teach us today. Heal your people. Deliver. Let Jesus alone be glorified. In Jesus' name. And God's people said amen. Hello there, Pastor Chusey, Glory House Atlanta. This is Command Your Day. Give me my portion. Give me my portion. Princess Ruth, you're welcome. Edward, you're welcome. Ronnie, you're welcome. Adrian St. Latrice, I will prevail. You are welcome. Uh, faithful, Avalanche of Praise, Karen Taylor, Tamika. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are. You are welcome to command your day today. DG of N Beast Jet, you're welcome. Tamika, thanks for inviting followers. As we go through the entrance protocols, Goodified, you're welcome. Ever highly favored, you're welcome. DGS, welcome. Okay, Deborah, you're welcome. Give me my portion. If you missed it yesterday, anybody missed it, go find it. Go and find it. You, everybody on earth must listen, if possible, to last night's broadcast. I had, it was something else. If you missed it, go find it. Pastor Joseph, you're welcome. You're welcome, you're welcome. Everybody, if you can find it, go on YouTube. Look for Pastor Choosy. I have uploaded it. I'd I upload every day's uh, broadcast. Uh, Gogoras, you're welcome. Prophet Smart, you're welcome. I upload, upload as quickly as possible all of the broadcasts. I mean, you can have a whole day feasting on broadcasts from, from YouTube. Okay, Curly, you're welcome. Life changing. It took me a while to recover. If I am recovered, I don't think I want to recover from that encounter. Tonight, give me, uh-huh, somebody's writing, I woke up and rebuked the devil with holy anger. Very good, very good message yesterday, thank you. Rebuke the devil with holy anger. So something transferred and the spirit entered into me when he spake unto me. I believe it's Ezekiel chapter 2 verse 2. Ezekiel chapter 2, verse 2, and the spirit was transferred. Unique, you're welcome. John 6, 63. John 6, 63. The words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. David, you're welcome. They are spirit and they are life. Hallelujah. I was getting ready to go live Okay, Judge uh, Judge Queen Triple Seven is gonna be awesome. Diary David watching, Minister Derry, you're welcome. Somebody said I released a loud shout and felt and it felt great. Thank you. Somebody says I like your shirt. Thank you, sir. Pastor, you're welcome. Greetings, Etabeta. Somebody wrote I slept so good last night. Haven't slept like that in a long time. Uh-huh. Somebody's writing, Pastor, after I command your day, I spoke in tongues continuously. Glory be to God. Dorothy, you're welcome. Dorothy is probably still floating around from last night, <laughs> the broadcast. <laughs> Judith, you're welcome. I was, I was seated here, getting ready to go on, to come on this program, and the Lord changed the message. And that's why he's the Lord. He can do it as he wishes. He can. Helena, where have you been? Welcome today. And he said, give me my portion. And that is what he's asked me to ask you to go for. Everybody, give me my portion. Give me my portion. In my introductory remarks, let me remarks, let me say this. If you wait, you waste. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. 
Honey, you didn't get what he said. Danny, you're welcome. He didn't say they that sit and fold their hands and wait. Uh-uh. You're waiting in prayer. You're waiting in fasting. You're waiting in intercession. You're waiting in soul, wi soul winning. You're waiting in serving in your church. Hello, Sylvia. You're welcome. You're waiting in doing the work of the Lord. No, no, no. It's the waiting. Doesn't, oh, yes. Last time, last night was a bombshell. <laughs> your people, Father, your people, may they never recover from last night. Amen. Pastor Sunday, Dr. Reverend Sunday is in the house again. When he shows up, I love it, love it, love it. Give, uh -huh, somebody wrote, Pastor, I'm getting divine lifters and largest mentors and sponsors after the programs. There you go. So we wait while we are profitably engaged in God's work. Now write this down. Life is all about inheritance. Life is all about inheritance. Life is all about portion. Life is all about destiny. Life is all about scope. Life is all about relevance. Life is all about contribution. Life is all about possessions. There's nothing wrong with materialism. Look at what the Word of God says in Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes chapter 5. Abijah, you're welcome. Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 9. Moreover, the profit of the earth, the profit of the earth is for all. The king himself is served by the field. Moreover, the profit of the earth is for all. Please share on Facebook, share on Periscope. Thank you. Thank you, Bishop. The profit of the earth is for all. You wait, you waste. You waste your time, you waste your destiny, you waste other people's time. No, you are not called, we are not saved unto waiting. There must be a restlessness. Don't you see how babies behave? If they can sit up, they sit up. If they can walk, they start to walk. If they can't walk, they grab on something. They don't sit in one place. As soon as they, if they, if they, if they can't do nothing, they start crawling. You don't sit down on earth and wait for your inheritance to come. Well, I'm waiting on the Lord to send my husband. You're going to wait for a long time, baby. Mm-hmm. Well, Pastor, I don't know, you know, I am just waiting on the Lord. I ask people that all the time. So what are you waiting for? Well, I'm waiting for the time to be right. I'm waiting for, 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 for the perfect timing. I'm waiting for the Lord to, 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 to move. I'm waiting for that. That's what that man said in, in John 5, 38 years he was waiting. For the angel to come and carry him into the pool. He said, before I get there, all those people, 38 years of his life. Thank God for Jesus. Well, I'm too old for that, Pastor. I'm too old for this. I can't do that. I can't go here. I can't get that. I'm too old, Pastor. I'm too old to get married. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm too old to go out and riot with people and do protests against injustice, against black people and the minorities and helpless people and poor people in the USA. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm too, no, 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 no. That's why they are not, it's not, I don't support the looting and the breaking of stores and all the blood shedding, but all of that protest has a, a point and it has a voice. And something has to be done about it. Because these boys and girls don't care about no curfew, no brutality, nothing. 
is a movement. Okay? Hallelujah. It requires understanding for you to get it. The profit of the earth is for all. There's no king, no prince, no princess, no queen, no, there's no preferred status. God is the God of all. God is our Father. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and they that belong to it. Call it manifestation, joy, widow. Call it inheritance. Call it possession. Call it portion. You cannot afford to sit there and waste. Wait and waste. Go for broke. Step out. Do something. Fail, but do something. I guess I've given you the whole message. <laughs> Ecclesiastes 5 and 9. The profit of the earth is for all. It's not for one person, one group, one sex, one race, one superior group of people somewhere, some hierarchy in the church. Uh-uh. The profit of the earth is for all. It's for all. You're welcome, Joe Thompson. V. Darcy is for all. I know Hogan is watching. I sense a Hoganistic anointing. <laughs> There's a man called Caleb, one of my best friends. In Joshua chapter 14, Joshua 14, 10 to 12. Joshua 14, 10 to 12. One day, Caleb went to the leader, Joshua. Look at what he said. And now, behold, the Lord had kept me alive, as he said, these 40 and 5 years. Ever since the Lord spoke this word unto Moses, while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness, and now, lo, I am this day fourscore and five years old. I am 85 years old. And yet, as yet, I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me. He was 40 when Moses sent him as one of the 12 spies. And now he's 85. 45 years later, he went to the leader. He said, even so is my strength now for war, both to go out and to come in. Now, therefore, give me this mountain whereof the Lord spake in that day. Give me my portion. Give me my inheritance. Give me my possession. Give me my share of the profit of the earth. Give me my portion of the milk and honey of the promised land. This book is a book of inheritance. 7,000 promises. 7,000 promises. It's a book of inheritance. The entire Christian life is all about inheritance. What is inheritance? Valuable possession that is handed down from generation to generation. Why did Moses go to Pharaoh? Let my people go. Beverly, you're welcome. That they may go into their inheritance. That I promised their father Abraham 400 plus years before. Joseph. Why did God send him to Egypt? To preserve an inheritance for God's people. Why did Boaz need a wife to, to have a Jesse, a son, to inherit his inheritance? Who inherited, who inherited the wealth and the 
opulence and splendor of David, Solomon. What is all this fight about job and money and income and bonuses and raises and car notes and house notes and money? And it's all about inheritance, your portion in the land of the living. That's what all this warfare is all about. That is just the, that's the message. That people will sit down and deny others their inheritance. Now, there are different levels. Their inheritance from their parents. Some people, yes, sir, the Bible is a book of inheritance handed over from generation to generation. And what is all this warfare? Wuhan, China, coronavirus, real estate collapse, and these, and firings, and hirings, and warfare, and divorce. And it's all about inheritance, folks. The number one cause of divorce on earth is not adultery, it's money, money problems, money problems. And Joshua woke up one day and said, I am 85. I've been waiting for 40 years, 45 really, for you to wake up one day and say, J Caleb, come and take your portion. And it has not happened. Now I'm 85. I will not wait any longer. My first prayer today for somebody watching is that in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that something will spark in your spirit and you will rise up like the four lepers and you will rise up like Queen Esther and say, if we perish, we perish, but we have to move forward. I pray that in the name of Jesus. Say amen to that. You've got to wake up, folks. This is more of a... Apostle Paul was so, was so into it. He was so into it that he wrote to the Ephesians. Ephesians. He wrote to the Ephesians. Ephesians 1, 15 and 18. Ephesians 1, 15 to 18. Wherefore, I also... After I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the Lord of our, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you, here we go, the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation in the knowledge of him, that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Inheritance, go study it, and um, is a huge subject that the body of Christ Somebody, well, Pastor, I know you, you just cut the chase. Tell, tell me what 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 what, what am, uh, am I inheriting? You have a lot. Every what is this warfare? Why do why does the devil want to take you out? And he will fail and continue to fail. All warfare on earth, spiritual, biological, physical, emotional, financial, political, military. Name everything, even in the church. All that fight over real estate, over lands, houses, all of, all of, at the end of the day, is all about possessions, inheritance, portion, allocation, shares, sharing, receiving. Don't forget. The profit of the earth belongs to all. Now, why did Apostle Paul pray for the Ephesian church? 
Because if you don't wake up to it, nothing will happen. Some, remember Ecclesiastes chapter 10, he said, I've seen a horrible thing, something I've never seen before, he said. And he said, I've seen servants walking. Um, no, servants riding on horses. And princes are walking. You people are riding on your horse and you are trekking in the spirit realm right now. I don't know who you are because you refuse to acquire knowledge, to wake up, to rise up and say, no, that house is my portion. That land is my portion. Healing is my portion. Deliverance is my portion. Favor is my portion. Come on, somebody. Until you rise up like Caleb is at 85, he was still... What is an 85-year-old man fighting for? I will tell you why. He wasn't fighting so he could show off that he was strong. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 7. He was fighting so that his next generation won't have to fight. Look at all that real estate he got. He took the mountain, changed the name of that city. Did you hear that his four children were crying and fighting? No. But suppose said that the eyes of your understanding may be opened up so you can realize the next generation, so you can wake up and say, wait a minute, you mean if I don't do something, if you have to go back to school, if you have to start baking bread in your kitchen and putting it online for people to buy? Now, there's this, uh, who was telling me the other day, you can cook in your home and people will order and uh, something, somebody, some arrangement, they'll come pick it from your house not a restaurant, and take it to the people. If you have to open a cleaning business, stop waiting because you're wasting inheritance. I, I mean, the, the lady, I was on uh, Uber the other day before the shutdown, and the lady was telling me, do you know about uh, this? I said, no. Do you know about this? Do you know that now people cook in their homes and people order and they send in what they want and they pay and then they send an Uber or somebody to come pick up the food and take it to the people? No, people don't. Listen, restaurants is old business. Restaurant is old business. There's a new way now. Oh, Pastor Francis, you're welcome. People, not Uber Eats. Some, the summer, he told me I wrote everything down somewhere. You, you, yeah, you saw it on TV. There you go. It's not a restaurant. My wife cooks. She puts it somewhere, a line or something that this is what we're having for dinner today or tomorrow. People will see it and say, we want a portion of your wife's dinner for tonight. And my wife says $45 a meal. And they say, okay, they pay online. You get the alert, a, a cash app or something. Mm -hmm. And they send a, a cab or Uber or somebody to pick it up. Home to home, or you know. Innovation. Innovation. Innovativeness. Innovativeness. Hallelujah. Your inheritance your horse, if you don't do something, somebody will ride on your horse while you're trekking, God forbid. You better, if you can fry chicken, fry it, put it on Instagram, use your phone to take the picture, put it, tell your teenage grandsons or somebody to put, open up an Instagram account for you. Take a picture, put it up. You'll be shocked at people who will say, we want that. And they'll send you the money. Hallelujah. Something has to happen in somebody's, somebody's life today. In the name of Jesus. Say amen to that. Innovation. 
Joshua sitting there. And here comes uh, Caleb. Caleb, what do you want? I want that give me my mountain. Give me my, give me my shear. Give me my portion. Give me my inheritance. Give me what Jesus died for and secured for me. Give it to me. Give it to me. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 4. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 4. Being made so much better than the angels as he had uh -huh, as as he had by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. Even Jesus had to fight for his inheritance. Your husband is your inheritance. Your baby is your inheritance. Somebody please share on Facebook. I want the numbers to go up. There's nothing like greed in the kingdom of God or too much. You sit there. People are doing stuff. People are going places. I just, something happened to me the other day last week. I just woke up one day and something just sparked in my, I guess it was that, I was waiting for that download of faith. Something just exploded inside of me. Wait a minute. So coronavirus is bigger than God? What is all this fear? What is all this tre trembling and tremor and, and freaking out and, you, you're afraid of sneezing. You, you, no, 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 no. All that stuff is good. The sanitizer is here. I got my oil, a bottle. I got the small one in case it, you want to mess with me. <laughs> I got my communion. We're going to break bread tonight in a moment. Okay. I got my gloves. I got my mask. I have a friend who is um, giving me 200 masks, 200 medical masks for Glory House, free of charge, 200 pieces. And something just sparked inside of me that, wait a minute, if we stay here and wait for the day that China will tell us that coronavirus is dead and uh, this and the government will... No, the government has done all they could. It is left for the body of Christ to step out by faith, in faith, with faith, with all the way. Are you saying coronavirus is great, greater than the blood of Jesus? Remember, we did, we did the series on faith for so long. Maybe it was after that teaching on faith for over a week that something rose on the side of me. And I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. What are we sitting here doing? What are we doing? What are we doing? Wait, but, okay, the government said you, you can, nine lessons I did on faith, nine broadcasts on faith. After that, you can tell me that there's a mountain too high or valley too low or giant too strong or virus too tiny, yet too devastating. Not me, not here, no fear here in the name of Jesus. Dr. Ozo, you're welcome. Give me his time. What if they say this thing will be the new normal forever, for, you know? When are we gonna rise up? You're scared of what? But you go to the grocery store, you go show houses, you go look at houses, you go to the mall. Some of you have started going to the re restaurant. Some of you go to work. Not work at home, drive out to work. But you, and you go by faith or by fear or what, trepidation, whatever. But when it comes to the house of God, oh, no, 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 no. Oh, Pastor Tuesday, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no, no, no. You go to the hairdresser, nail dresser, eye dresser. Huh? Hey, barber. But we will not come to the destiny dresser. Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. 
Trevor on six, you're welcome. Something has to, we go to the bank. Amen now. Something has to change. Somebody's testifying during the ninth series on faith. He says, since then, my life has never remained the same. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. You're welcome. You're welcome. It's enough. Look at, do you know that our inheritance is the purest inheritance in the universe? First Peter chapter 1. First Peter chapter 1. Verse 3, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy had begotten us again. That is, we're born again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. If there's the power that raised Jesus from the dead on inside of us, where do you know? If God is waiting for the church to rise up, for this virus to be cast out from off the earth, lively hope. And then verse 4, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that faded not away, oh my God, reserved in heaven for you. And here on earth, verse 5, you are kept by the power of God. Here we go. Through faith. On to salvation. Ready to be revealed. So what keeps you and I mm -hmm, is actually the power of God. It's not the uh, mask and gloves and uh, this, which is all fine with me. Look at what somebody said on Facebook. I go to work and grocery. The Lord's got me covered. I do not give in to the spirit of fear. There you go. When that thing sparked in me, I drove out to the church. I told them, we're going to have 50 chairs, 40, 30. This Sunday, we're starting services, church service at Glory House. Somebody clap and give God praise for that. Glory be to God. We are going to church. And you all are coming with me because you will watch it. And nobody will die. Nobody will catch no virus. Anyone sick of any sickness, they walk into the presence of God. They will be healed in the name of Jesus. Say amen to that. I now understand why God had me teach on faith. And guess what? We will have two services. One at 8 a.m., one hour service, then the next service, another one hour, one hour, eight to nine, second service, nine oh five, nine fifteen to ten, ten fifteen, and we're done. So those of you watching, listening, all of our family, all roads lead to Glory House this coming Sunday. Come with your mask. Come with your gloves. They even have Louis Vuitton masks. They have Gucci masks. Whatever you need to do, fashionalize it, you know, accessorize it. Come. It is not because we're too rich, righteous or rich or too beautiful or too handsome that we're leaving. Somebody's preaching with me. But we are going to church. Sanitize. We're sanitizing, professional sanitizers are coming, or whatever they call them, fumigators, fumigate the whole building. The whole building fumigated. We've packed all the chairs. I was there myself at church. Sunday I was there, Sunday evening. Monday I was back there. Only today I didn't go. Amen now. I went to see what they did. They've who put all the chairs and these and what have you. Why? Faith. Without faith, you cannot subdue kingdoms. You cannot take territory. You cannot receive your inheritance. You cannot move forward in life. At some point, everybody listening, you're going to wake up and draw a line in the sand and say, this giant, you've been around for 40 days. You've threatened us. You've harassed us. I'm going to step out with five five rocks 
and I'm going to go out there and I'm coming against you, whatever it is called, call it virus, call it sickness, call it poverty, call it failure, call it disaster, call it fear, call it whatever. We're coming out and we're coming out in the power and in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, enough is enough. Somebody, that, somebody say amen. That is the spirit that is in the world today. All those boys and girls rioting, protesting, making peace marches and so on. What And they say, oh, there's a curfew. They don't care about no curfew. Police shooting them, them doing them, gassing them. Don't matter. You get to a point, a saturation point, where you're sick and tired of being sick and tired. Until that thing happens, in your spirit, in your mind, you cannot come out from Lodibar. I had a bully when I was uh, a little boy. My cousin, a girl older than me, far, far older, probably with maybe 10 years. Any small thing. I was probably 11, 12 years old. She was, no, not up to 10. She probably was probably 18, 19, 20, maybe 20, I don't know. Man, that girl ruled my life, man. She ran my life. Some of you are laughing. I couldn't lift up my head <laughs> in the house. And one day, I was ironing my school uniform, school clothes, to go to school, getting ready to go to school or something. And she, something happened. And she came and slapped me as usual. And something said to me, if you don't do something today, yeah, she bullied me. You've heard the story before. Don't mess with me, open doors. And she said to me, and I, something said to her, I don't know if it was the Holy Ghost or maybe a little devil. I wasn't born again there. I just say, young boy, not a, probably uh, 11 going to 12. It must have been the devil. <laughs> I don't think it was the devil. The devil don't want you to be free. <laughs> oh, glory be to God. Somebody's watching from Brazil. You're welcome, Wal Walner. Wal Walmer. Lileki. Welcome. And I grabbed the, I was ironing. Okay? I was ironing. And she slapped me, trying to beat me up, bully me, push me around as usual. And uh, the, the, I think, guess it was the spirit of inheritance <laughs> or, the, or the anointing, I don't know. I just said, wait a minute. Today is the final day you will mess with me. What can you do? What can you do? If you talk, I'll slap you now. Really? Yeah. I took the iron, hot pressing iron. I said, today, I'm going to iron you. I will press you. You ain't going to find no wrinkles, no blemish, no spot. <laughs> By the time I'm done with you. She stood for a moment when she saw. Oh, yeah, la bosque ferenias. When she saw the fire in my eyes. Maybe she saw a devil. I don't know what she saw. But she could see that this boy was going for broke. She turned around and ran for her life. <laughs> I said, today, I will, you will be in my school uniform. I will so iron you that by the time I'm done, you'll be white. Okay. She ran for her life. I started screaming. <laughs> that was my day. 
the day that I got my independence. That was my July 4th. That was my day of emancipation, my day of liberation, <laughs> my day of freedom. <laughs> <laughs> Pastor Francis, <laughs> that was the day I got my July 4th, okay? Glory be to God. Since that day till today, oh, I became her best friend. I mean, she would protect me. She back in the day and so on. And um, I got my free, I pray. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you may just have to get your iron, in, get your hot iron in the spirit. Don't go iron your cousin now. Get your hot iron in the spirit. Go after that devil of sickness, that devil of infirmity, that devil of poverty and fear, that whatever that has got you tied down cornered, hiding in your house, it's time to take dominion. Somebody say amen to that in the name. Receive the anointing of relentless intensity against your adversary in the name of Jesus. It's enough. It's enough. It, until you get this thing that comes on people, the spirit of enough is enough is an anointing. You can only get it in the presence of God. Let me say this. Most of us pray, but don't get answers. Most of us worship, but do not connect. Most of us sow seed without any answer. Most of us do all these spiritual things we're doing, but no result. You know why? It's not done in the spirit. It's done in the flesh. That is the secret. Once you do it in the flesh, God says, for the things of the spirit, war against the things of the flesh. And things of the flesh, war against things of the spirit. Uh, uh, Dorothy, you can switch over. If you're having problems on Facebook, please jump over to Periscope, okay? The devil is alive. Facebook was on fire yesterday. Today, Periscope is on fire. And every platform is on fire. We cover it with the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Something just would happen to you. And it will just spark in your spirit. I had um, one of our members working, serving me for so long, trying to get into medical school, impossible. Did everything, didn't work. We fasted, we prayed, we sowed seed, we did intercession, we repented, we confessed sins, we did everything. Nothing worked. And I began to work on myself in prayer, in faith. Something was rising, rising. And I'm talking to somebody, you are afraid of going into the hospital for something. I don't know what it is. If you're pregnant or something and you're so scared, begin to build. Go on YouTube, those nine lessons on faith. You begin to listen over and over and again and over. You won't know something is happening. Something is happening. And one day you just wake up and say, Doctor, here I come. I'm ready. And you walk in and walk out with a testimony. Why? In his presence is fullness of joy. You must stay in the spirit. Then you can excel and succeed in the spirit. If you stay in the flesh, you will feel frustration. You will struggle. You will sweat. You will be afraid. You will be scared. You will be in trepidation. You will be trembling. You, you will be uncertain. 
you, you will sow with no result, pray with no presence, fast with no impact. That's why we get, we, many of us, we're sick and tired of being a Christian because that's nothing. Why? We're doing them in the flesh, not in the spirit. Until the spirit is poured out from on high, don't do it. Until the spirit quickens you, quicken us that we may call upon you. David understood it. David will not go to God until he felt God touch him. Draw us that we may draw you. Pursue us that we may pursue you. In Luke 24, Luke 24, on the way to Emmaus, he walked fast and caught up with them and conversed with them and talked with them and traveled with them. And then he broke bread with them and their eyes were open after he did all that preaching for seven miles, revealing himself in the scriptures. And their eyes were open spiritually and then he vanished. Why? And they ran, they walked all day, all day from Jerusalem to Emmaus, seven mile journey, not too long, a long walk, trek. But after their eyes were enlightened and they had that bread with him, their eyes were open. But guess what? They had enough strength to run back seven miles to Jerusalem to go tell. Remember, they walked to Emmaus from Jerusalem, weary, down, weak. And when he caught up with them, he said, what are you people conversing, talking about? They said, are you a stranger? Didn't you hear of Jesus that was arrested and killed and this and that? He said, yeah. And then he said, don't you know the word of God? And began to explain it to them. And suddenly, when they got full, he got them to a place their eyes open, he vanished. And they got impartation from that bread that he broke. Can you imagine? And the wine he shared with them. Eyes open, strength came to go take their portion in the land of the living. I pray for someone watching today that something will spark in you. And you will say, you know what? No more waiting. On, I remember 2012. One day I just, I just woke up. I said to my wife, today I'm going to go get you a car. She said, what? I said, I have faith, something in, I am full. This is the day we're going to get you a car. Our car was giving problems. Long story short, we got there and got the car. Ridiculous conditions. Until that thing sparks in you. Yeah, I know, Pastor, I know that healing is my portion, but I don't know if it's God's will for me. Until that thing sparks in you, you will just sit there and say, oh, well, you know, whatever will be, will be. Whoever wrote that song needs to be arrested. Sandra, find me who wrote that song. They need to be arrested. In Numbers 27, 1 to 7. Numbers 27, 1 to 7. <laughs> so a bunch of girls, the daughters of a man called Zelophehad. Zelophehad, I hope I got it right. Zelophehad. The daughters of brother Zelu, the son of Hefer, the son of Gilead, the son of Maker, the son of Manasseh, of the families of Manasseh, the son of Joseph. And he had all daughters, Mehla, Noah, Hogla, Milcha, Terzer, or Tizer, five daughters. Their father died and had no son. And the Bible said that their father 
did not die in sin. He was a good man. He had a good report. And these girls one day went to Moses, five girls, and said to the high priest, Eliezer, brother Zillow, yes, and to Moses, the prophet. Imagine these five girls, fatherless, showed up at church. Hello, sister. Said, no, we're not here for no greeting. From the look on their faces, pastor and prophet knew that these, these girls, don't, they're not here for a joke. They stood by the door. Our father died in the wilderness. He was not in the company of them that gathered themselves together against the Lord in the company of Korah, but died in his own sin and had no sons. And they said, long story short, give us therefore a possession among the brethren of our father. Moses said, the girls don't inherit nothing, only boys. They said, we're not taking that. Moses said, listen, it's not my portion. I am only telling you what God said. If you're a girl, you ain't got no portion. The girl said, we're not leaving you here, sir. With due respect, go back to God and tell him that the five daughters of brother Zelo, Dickin Zelo, wants, they want their portion, their father's inheritance. Moses said, you know what? I, don't, I ain't got no problem. Listen, just go. Just go home. I'll get back to you. And that night, Moses said, Lord, what's up with those girls? The Lord said, look at what the Lord said to him. And the Lord spake unto Moses saying, the daughters of Zelophehad, Speak right. Thou shalt surely give them a possession of an inheritance among their father's brethren. Folks, ay, yeah, 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 yeah. May God bless his word because I, I, I don't want to go. Give to us a possession because of five girls who went against tradition. How dare you be appear before Moses? Moses, that called down fire from heaven? Moses, that had a stick that turned to a snake? What if he throws it and it turns to a snake? I mean, you know, what if? But we're girls. Are you sure? Did God say this? Are we sure? What if we go and he fires us? What if he calls the earth to open up again? No, 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 no. Until you rise up. You may just not change history. God is waiting on you, somebody, to stand up and step out and rise up. Notice, they spake, and God said to Moses, the daughters of Zelophehad speak right. In other words, they prayed well. Who knows how many days those five girls spent in prayer and building up their faith. God said, Moses, I overturn what I said. I overrule myself. All protocol broken. All protocol suspended. All the law, tradition, broken, canceled, nullified. Because these girls asked, I changed the book. Five girls change the book that God wrote and gave to Moses. Five girls. And not only that, it became a law in the land that from now on, if a man dies, he has no son, his daughter will inherit his portion. You go read it in 
Numbers 27. Read the whole story. Read the Bible sometime. Let me close. So, Pastor, I'm fired up. I'm excited. My father is not Zelo. I'm not. So what is my, I didn't go into the names of those five girls, what they, each of their names mean. But let's close quickly and look at the meaning. Okay, so how do, I, do we apply, Pastor, I really like your teaching today, but how do I apply it? I'm a single mother. I'm a divorcee. I have no job. My car is giving problems. Um, Pastor Tuesday, I really like you, but um, I don't have money. Um, I, I work late. Uh, my car, Pastor, I really would like to come to your church, but I live far. Uh, Pastor, I wish I was, uh, thank God, we have online now. You can't say you live in Chattanooga or somewhere. Uh, Pastor, I don't have a father. Pastor, my mother died when I did not this and that. Pastor Juicy, I, 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 are you sure? And then they said, I don't make enough money. I don't have enough hours. I work late. I work early. I don't work at all. I have no clients. My business is struggling. All of that is because, hear me now, your eyes, your understanding have not opened up. Healing, number one, healing is your inheritance. Don't, you're not called to beg for healing. Oh God, please heal me. Oh God, heal me. Heal me, please. Oh God, please heal me. Don't let me die, oh. <laughs> uh, healing is your inheritance. You don't need to beg for it. What should I do, Pastor? You take it. You're not even supposed to request for it. You take your healing. That is one. Number two, deliverance is your portion. Deliverance is your portion. The greater one is on the inside of you than he that is in the world. When I didn't know about deliverance, I didn't. I, I would. I was a specialist as I, I'd going around looking for somebody to pray for me. I would. Oh, if I heard back in the day, if I heard that somebody was a deliverance, even if he lived five hours from where I lived, I'd go to anywhere looking for deliverance. I did not know that I could be in my home and take my deliverance, that Jesus already paid for it. Thank you, Dorothy. That's number two. Number three, prosperity is your portion. First Peter 2, 24. And then healing is the children's bread. Prosperity, third John 2. Third John 2, prosperity is your portion that you may prosper and be in health in all areas. Pros the day I discovered that, that was the day I started eating from Jehovah's pocket. Divine preservation, number four. I'll give my angels charge over you until that thing sparks in your head. You'll be afraid of even the flu. Prosperity is your portion. Divine preservation is your portion. Number five, divine protection is your portion. There's a difference between preservation and protection. David, let's use Abraham. Abraham was protected from enemies. Nobody killed him before his time. But God preserved Abraham and gave him a long life. Preservation keeps your bodies fresh, strong, nice, firm, well, functioning well, clear mind. Preservation 
you can preserve your bread. You can buy a loaf of bread and preserve it in the freezer or preserve it in the bread uh, or basket or whatever they put bread in. I don't eat bread. And that's fine. But the fact that you preserved it doesn't mean it's protected. <laughs> It can be preserved until somebody really hungry finds it. So preservation is different from protection. Protection against the enemy. Preservation. Well, take your notes whichever way you want, honey. Preservation is from to preserve youth, vitality, energy, drive, zeal, vivacity. Viviciousness, so your teeth don't fall out at 20, <laughs> and you have wrinkles at 35. You see some of these women, they've had six children, five children. Their stomach is flat. You won't know they've ever had children. Why? God preserved their body. I'm not saying those who don't have a flat tummy are not preserved, please. <laughs> Don't text me, please. But you know what I mean. Number six, let's move. Number six, what else is my inheritance? Joy is your inheritance. In the package, spiritual gifts. Okay, somebody's writing on Periscope. Please release that grace upon us, man of God. It's evident that you have that grace in your life. Okay, praise the Lord. Well, I try. Amen now. God has, is good. I pray for your body to be preserved. Your youth, your beauty, your skin to be preserved. Now I know why I'm wearing this short sleeve shirt. Didn't know why. I had something else to wear. The Lord said, go put on that one. Yes, sir. I pray that God will preserve you. Preserve your joy, that nothing will take away your joy and excitement, that nothing will take away your love for God. And I pray also that God will protect you against the adversary in the name of Jesus. Receive that grace to be preserved and be protected, the two different things. I'm sure you've got it now. In the name of Jesus. Now, what else is our portion? Yours, it's also your inheritance, in case you don't know. Your inheritance includes real estate, lands, plural, houses, plural, farms, estates. Subdivisions, that's your inheritance and mine. Let's rush. You, in case you do not know, do you know that peace, security is your inheritance? Let's go. I hope you're writing. Do you know that a good Stable, non crazy, no drama, spouse is your inheritance. I hope you know that now. It's your right, it's in the book. Jesus already paid. You don't need to pay. It's not your inheritance to have a crazy spouse all in the name of peace and love and desperation because everybody has got married and you have to do something. I hope you know that. That is your inheritance to have a home full of flowers with no thorns. No thorns. Jesus said, it is finished. He paid for it. I hope you know that. Do you know that it's your inheritance 
to be free and far from oppression. Of all, that's why when people in glory house tell me somebody on the job or somebody's messing with them, it, it, it does something to me. I don't. I I I I I, I become very unfriendly in 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 a very quick uh, something. You touch my children. You touch those who belong to me. The spirit of a hot iron comes upon me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Why? Time is going. The months, the years, the weeks, the days, the hours are flying past. And somebody is out there making life miserable for you, tormenting you, harassing you. And you expect me as your pastor to be nice to them? It ain't going to happen now. Don't tell me. Time is going. And somebody will hurt you, throw you off the bus, throw you under the bus, kick you, write you off, write you up, fire you, push you around, curse you out, make life miserable for you, go home, have their glass of wine, have themselves a good dinner, go to bed, sleep like a baby. They put you in jail emotionally, and they're busy going around, going, carrying on and as if nothing happened. It ain't going to happen on my watch, sweetheart. Don't tell me because I still have a Holy Ghost hot iron <laughs> in the spirit realm. I still got it now. Hallelujah. You don't touch anybody that I love. You can touch those I don't like. <laughs> I will give you the go ahead. Amen now. Let me give you two more. Your inheritance. Do you know that long life is your inheritance? Long, good, peaceful, beautiful life is your inheritance. And finally, do you know that heaven is your inheritance and mine. If you listen to preachers, they will talk you out of heaven. Don't listen to some of us. We don't know what we're talking about. We are Jennifer, Holy Ghost, hot iron. There are more than 40 inheritances for the body of Christ waiting in this book. Don't be fooled. Not every pastor knows what he's talking about. He's just talking. And don't be fooled by thousands of people in a church. God owns the church. He can put thousands under a stupid, foolish, illiterate shepherd. Because Jesus is the pastor. Yeah, you heard me right. Don't be fooled by a crowd. Don't be fooled by eloquence. Do not be fooled by any preacher. You better check them out in the spirit. Do they have the presence of God? Do they have the glory? Do they know what they're talking about? Most of us are in the flesh 24-7, praying for you, preaching to you, prophesying to you, laying hands on you, saying, thus said the Lord, taking your money, commanding, binding, and losing with no presence, no glory. I went to a church, <laughs> uh, and they called it a deliverance service. <laughs> and this lady was shaking the town. Man, this girl, this lady was on fire. I'm not saying your pastor is not anointed. Please don't go tell your pastor, Pastor Jesus said that. I'll play this message for him. I didn't say that. Let the Lord lead you. Let the Lord lead you. I walked in and the devil, this lady was just uh, shaking the place, casting out devils. 
And then she walked over to Lisa, come out in Jesus' name. I'm not going. I'm not coming out. I'm not coming out. I just sat there smiling. I said, uh-oh, oh, here comes another Rambo day. Triple W Wrestling uh, Arena. <laughs> uh, Mighty Igor. Johnny Quango. Uh, Give me the names of them, some of those uh, ancients. <laughs> I say today, oh boy, Mil Mascaras, your favorite. Back in the day, I say, here comes this wrestling thing. <laughs> Glory be to God. And after a while, the lady said, Pastor Jesus, you're here. Why do you allow this devil, macho man, yeah. Why do you allow this devil to disgrace me? Come and take over this thing. I said, but you're doing very well. We're here to support you. Oh, no, 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 Pastor, please. Yes, devil, what's up with you? I'm not going. What do you mean you're not going? Get out. Get out. Did you see Jesus struggling with your father, the devil? Get out, in Jesus' name. That's all. Can you pray for more? Pray for me for more zeal and more militancy. Hulk Hogan, yeah, there you go. Why should you be struggling with the devil? Come out in Jesus' name. I will not come out. Where are you from? Sahara Desert. Where are you going? Kalahari Desert. How many people have you killed? 500 people. Uh, where is your house? In uh, Nicaragua. What? <laughs> Uh, how many wives do you have? 20? Why did Jesus ask uh, such questions? When I discovered my inheritance, I stopped all that stupidity. Devil, get out now. In Jesus' name, amen. Boom. Shh, peace. Next. Why? If you cast out devils in the flesh, he ain't going to work. If you go for your inheritance in the flesh, it's not going to work. Get your communion elements. We're going to have communion, and I will pray for an impart for activation, impartation, release, whatever that you need. You got to open your mouth tonight. You've got to demand your inheritance, whatever you can find in this book. 7,000 promises is your inheritance. Pastor, I prayed, but it didn't work. Go for you. Go to your pastor. Call your pastor. Call somebody to agree with you. There are people who still carry God's presence all over the world, everywhere. You'd be shocked at how many people have a hot iron anointing looking for a devil to straighten up. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you're not born again, before we close, I want you to say after me, Lord Jesus, please forgive my sins. Wash me with your blood. I surrender to you, and I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. If you said that prayer, let me pray for you. Father, you promised that anyone that comes to you, that you will in no wise cast them away. I pray that you would wash these ones, cleanse them with your blood, put upon them a garment of righteousness, write their names in the book of life. Father, all of us count us worthy to reign with you forever and ever. In Jesus' mighty name. And God's people said, Amen. Get your bread. Our reference, of course, already I've made it. Luke 24. And Jesus broke the bread. Yes. You can send me a text. You can WhatsApp me. You can email me. You all do all the time anyway. And I really appreciate that. 
Command your dear people don't joke. They they find me. They text. They WhatsApp. They email. They they do. And God answers us. Glory be to God. In Luke twenty four. He broke the bread. The eyes of their understanding. Until your eyes are understand. Uh, your eyes are open. You can't see Jesus for who He is. He only turn your eyes upon Jesus. I can't remember the next line. Look full in his wonderful face until you turn your eyes upon Jesus. I can't remember the rest of the lines. That's why we need to go to church so we can have the professional singers. Look full in his wonderful face. I remember those two. You've got to look to Jesus for your eyes to be open. See, if we were, we were in church now, they would pick it up. And the things of earth would grow strangely dim in the light of his glory. Let me just stay with preaching, okay? Luke 24. Oh, glory be to God. You can read it later. From Luke 24, 13 to 33. It's a long passage. But tonight, I wonder, we are going to pray that the Lord, verse 31, and their eyes, oh, verse 30, and it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it. Thank you, Father. And break it. And gave to them, and their eyes were opened, and they knew him. How can you talk about Jesus you don't know? How can you know him without your eyes opened? And they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. Listen for, to me for a second. This is Jesus crucified broken, buried. And he took the bread and broke it and gave to them. Jesus was taken and broken and given to us. And they ate the bread and he vanished. And he became a living spirit on the inside of them. He moved from the physical realm to the spirit realm on the inside of them. He said to them, now use your faith. You don't need to see me to see me. I'm in here. I can be in here and be out there. This tonight is that your eyes will open up to see that coronavirus or any virus or any Obia man, Juju man, name it, terror, whoever is too small to stop you until you understand that Jesus is no more on the cross but is on the inside of you, you can't take your portion. Verse 33, And they rose up the same hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven gathered them together and them that were with them, saying, The Lord is risen indeed and appeared to Simon. And they told things that were done in the way and how he was known to them in the breaking of bread. The breaking of bread. I pray today that as we receive the body of Christ, our eyes will be open to see that we are blessed. We're a city on a hill. And that an anointing will come on somebody to go for your portion. The worst thing they can say to you is say no. But they can't stop you. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, you may now eat.
fear is gone. You will see clearly. 1 Corinthians 11. After the same manner, he took the cup. When he has stopped saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as oft as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. This cup contains the blood of Jesus. I pray today that you will receive the anointing of renewal, of preservation, vitality return, vigor return. Many pastors ask me, how do you do this command? You, do? you preach every day. You have to prepare a message every day, literally. I say, yeah. Why? It's easy. You know why? The presence is there. The anointing is there. The glory is there. The strength is there. Even when I feel so tired and physical, drained, exhausted, my wife will say, get up, honey. They're waiting on you. Ah, that's true. I pray that God will give you a spouse that will bring peace. I pray that God will give you a friend that will bring peace into your life. That you will just have joy. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. In the name of God the Father, I pray that God will give you an impartation of zeal, aggression, and that you will not die full, but you will die at a good old age, full of the blessings of God. Every one of us, that we will leave an inheritance, not just for our children, our children. How can you leave an inheritance for your children's children when you don't even have for yourself, not to talk of your children, then to your grandchildren? How? I pray that God will give somebody watching today supernatural speed. In the next 60 days from today, that you will catch up with those ahead of you and overtake them in the next 60 days in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I pray for those who have given their $1,000 seed. God told me 30 of them he would touch. I don't know how many are coming. I pray that God will put a seed in your hand between now and end of June to be a part of it that seed for the returning of the body of Christ to the house of God. In the name of God the Father, speed, let it come upon you. In the name of God the Son, youth, vitality, let it come upon you. In the name of God the Spirit, joy, zeal, hotness of spirit, dexterity, aggression in spiritual things. Let it come upon you. In the name of Jesus, you may now drink. Thank you, Father. To you be all the glory in Jesus' mighty name. And God's people said, Amen. Now, all of you watching, listening, all of this week, I'm going to be raising an offering for Glory House as we get ready to return to the building. There's a lot we need to put in place. We haven't used that building since March, April, May, this is June. So there's a lot we're gonna put in place, clean these, fumigate the whole building and clean the bathrooms and that and change these and put that and get this done and get this and we're not going to use our water fountain we're going to put bottles of water you, you, all kinds of things we're going to put in place to make sure that you know somebody is giving us 200 masks like i said medical masks i believe we're going to get it delivered tomorrow or thursday 
okay i'll let you know after we get them and i will put on one and you see some of the cutest masks you can see some of you have designer masks okay so we're going to make sure that everything is glory house excellence quality style okay and so on and so forth and we're going to separate do all kinds of things move the piano there move the, just to make sure that We've already straightened the building, the, the seating, is all the chairs, we took them out, rearranged, all kinds of things we're doing. But Sunday, all roads lead to church in the name of Jesus, okay? You will not be infected. You will not be afflicted. Jesus is with us, in us, for us, around us. We got the victory. So between now and Friday, prepare a seed if you want, we want all of our Command Your Day family to help us as we get ready to go back in. Of course, catch on, up on all our bills. <laughs> it's time to pay bills. <laughs> and even when the building was closed, we were still paying bills. So help us, all of our family. If you want, I don't care if it's a dollar or a thousand dollars, whatever the Lord lays on your heart. Tonight, every night, I will be asking only for this week. I hate to raise money on Command Your Day social media, but I have to because we need your help and support, okay? If you want to help us, you can use Zelle. You can send it by Zelle, and the number is 770-909-5000, 770-909-5000. Back to church offering. Back to church offering. You can do it through Cash App. Cash App. Dollar sign. Glory Church. Now you got quiet now. I'm not hearing nobody no more. Dollar sign. Glory Church. Help us. Okay. Dollar sign. Glory Church. On the Cash App. Zelle. 770-909-5000. You can also... Mail your check or give money order, postal order by mail, okay? Glory House World Church, 4877 Lawrenceville, Tucker, Georgia, 30084. You can actually go on our website right now, glory to glorychurch.org, glory to glorychurch.org. Click on the donate button, okay? And, um, Follow the prompts, click on the donor if it's an offering, tithe, whatever. I think it will be a blessing. Of course, we're going to be streaming. We're making plans now to stream the service on all platforms we can find. We're getting all kinds of things. They told me they need to get the media. I just told them, go do it, okay? We're going to expand our reach, even command your day. We're getting uh, all kinds of things ready to stream at the same time to four or five, all platforms, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Periscope, and what have you. And uh, thank you for your gift. Father, I pray for all, the, all those who have stretched out their hand to support Glory House as we return to church this coming Sunday. As we rejoice and celebrate and go back, to possess our possessions. Father, I pray that before Sunday, they will have their long-awaited testimony in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And God's people said him, and it's right there on, on Periscope. Somebody put all this information on Facebook. You can take a screenshot. Yes, Rita, we're waiting. We have free masks for you. You don't need to buy a mask. I hear master of scars come give you a mask at the entrance. Of course, we're not going to touch it. And our people wear gloves and so on. And whatever we need to do. And uh, God will bless us. You'll see it online. Thank you. Thank you for those prayers. In the name of Jesus. Tomorrow, we're going to have an extensive Bible study online. We're going to be doing only Sundays at church for now, only Sundays, and I will still be here every day, 7 p.m. EST, command your day, okay? And then on Sunday, we go to church, 
and we broadcast from church so you can be still a part of the movement. And I'm, tr I'm trusting God that God will use Glory House to still heal many people. Many people. Many people. Many people. Many people. In the name of Jesus. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being a part of today's broadcast. We'll see you tomorrow. Don't forget it's not over until you win. Bye-bye. Thank you.